It's the talk of the desert with Belinda Reed. I just love coming home at night. I turn around, she's a treasure. Everyone and everywhere I go, she's the talk of the desert. Now, here's Melinda. Talk of the Desert is back in Las Vegas and the other desert, because I can get all these really terrific people here in Las Vegas. And one of those terrific people is the conductor, the music director, the pianist to the stars. I mean, the true stars. His name is Vincent Balcone. Vinny, welcome to Talk of the Desert. Thank you. So thrilled to have you. You, you work with Stephen Eady, Robert Goulet, Rich Little, I know I'm leaving once out in a which while. People. Once in a while, yeah. yes. But who, but who are all the oh, other Oh, I work with Jack Jones once in a while. I worked with uh, like Phyllis McGuire. Uh, I, I, I have been with Paul Anka, with Tony Bennett, of course, with Frank Sinatra. The list goes on. It's been a it's been a nice ride. Are you name dropping? <laughs> 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 but that's all true. And you worked for Mr. Sinatra for twelve years. No, not quite that long. Okay. O- over a ten year period, several okay. years of uh, between nineteen seventy six and nineteen eighty six, and then actually worked uh, along with him on other projects while I was conducting for other people that were associated with his show. So actually, into the into the early nineties. And so it must have been a fantastic part of your career. Oh boy, let me tell you, it was, it was, it's what gave me a career. Um, I had uh, been fortunate enough to achieve the position of house pianist at Caesar's Palace, which was really my goal when I moved to Las Vegas. That's where I wanted to be because at that time Caesar's Palace was the mecca in Las Vegas. Not that it still isn't, but it was definitely then. Mm-hmm. And um, when I got that job, uh, <laughs> the first act for whom I had to play was Frank Sinatra. Really. And one thing led to another, and, and uh, because he took me on, uh, first as just pianist, and then gave me the job as conductor pianist, it gave me a reputation, and it, it uh, allowed me, through his uh, trust in me, to have a much greater career than I could have ever had without him. Well, let's talk about your newest career that's sitting right now down on your right-hand side. Yeah. Please show. You've become an author. Well, yeah, I have. I, uh, I have a book out that's... Uh, been published, uh, it came out in November, and it's called Frankly Just Between Us, and it's about all of this that I've just discussed with you from coming from Syracuse, New York, uh, moving to Las Vegas, family, bringing the family, and uh, the experiences that I've had, and then after meeting Mr. Sinatra, uh, and spending all those years with him, and then moving on from that point to be able to have been... uh, associated in one way or another with most of the great singers of our of our time. Mm-hmm. I've really had a terrific mm-hmm. Andy Williams and Connie Francis and it goes on and on. It's just been, and Frankie Randall. <laughs> hey, is it your, you are a name dropper. There's no question about that. <laughs> I've been, well, I'll tell you, I, I count myself very fortunate to be able to drop those names uh, and say that they are uh, people for whom I've worked and most of them have become my personal friends. But that's the reason you, you are so talented, and that's why they have selected you to work with well, them. Well, thank you, know? you. That's very kind. I appreciate that very much. Uh, I like to think that I, that I know what I'm doing, but uh, uh, you, <laughs> there's always somebody out there who's better than you. So you can always learn from, from someone else. Now, you mentioned you came from Syracuse, yeah. New York. Um, when did you get into music? How, what, at what age? Uh, at the age of three. Well, what were you doing at the age of three? <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> Getting remember. up on the piano bitch and banging on the keys. Yeah, well, <laughs> more or less. My my mother and dad had a friend who was a music teacher. Her name was Jane Noder Thomas. And she apparently perceived what she thought was some musical ability in me at the age of three, and she asked my parents if she could see what she could do with me. And I can I still have vague memories of sitting. You remember the old wind up stool on piano? Of room? course. We used to call them eagle claws. And, <laughs> Uh, I can still have vague memories of sitting on one of those, of course, being so small that my feet were, you know, this far off the floor. You couldn't reach the pedal, reach the pedal any, any but I could just barely see over the keyboard. <laughs> and uh, she taught me to play by rote. She would play something, and then I would play it back. I, she discovered that I have a, a musical ear, and I was, I'm able to do that. And uh, then she turned, as, as I got older, she turned me over to one of her students, who was a, uh, a student at Syracuse University at the time, who became uh, my teacher 
and mentor until I went to college. Her, and uh, uh, her name was Barbara McHale. She's no longer with us, but she was probably the most spectacular. And I hate to say this because it sounds like a chauvinist, but I don't mean it that way. She, as a woman pianist, she was as good as any man. But as a woman pianist, I, I never heard anybody really? like her. She was just phenomenal. And she carried me on until I uh, entered college, went to Syracuse University, and then from then on. What did you major in in college? Well, <laughs> you know, I come from an Italian family, and uh, for the most part, uh, Valcone, it, it would be definitely Italian. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, my mother, my mother saw to it that I had a musical education. She she made sure that uh, my my parents made sure I had a piano when they couldn't afford one, and made sure I had piano lessons when they couldn't afford to pay for them and so forth. Uh, but in a traditional Italian family, as in many other ethnic groups as well, music is not considered to be a vocation, it's considered to be an avocation. So when I went to college, I went to the School of Engineering, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> After about two and a half years of that, calculus and uh, graphic drawing, all of that, yeah. I, I couldn't take it anymore. So I switched to the School of Business Administration, which I hated even more. <laughs> and I finally said to myself, you know, this is stupid. So I, I went and applied to music school, and I was accepted. And so I, uh, I, the last, uh, my last period in college was in the School of Music at Syracuse University. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But how did you develop now, you know, becoming a conductor, a music director, pianist for all these different um, uh, fantastic singers? Well, it's, yeah, that's, a, that's an amazing, I don't even believe it. <laughs> it's Pitch all yourself, due to Mr. Huh? Sinatra. There's no question about that. He, when he heard me play, I mean, he and I became friends uh, over the years. I mean, he became my second father, if you will. He was a year older than my dad. And he was extremely good to me and extremely good to my, my parents and my wife and children. Uh, but he, when I played for him that first time at Caesars, he told me later on, he heard something that he liked. And so for the first year, I played only at Caesars Palace for him. And then towards the end of that year, he started taking me on the road with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, about a year and a half after that, uh, I he gave me the job as music director. Well, that of course opened all the doors. I mean, I met then I, I got to meet everybody: Jimmy Van Heusen and Sammy Kahn and, and Nelson Little and Don Costa and Gordon Jenkins, and the list goes on and on. All of these people who were, you know, unattainable for me, mm -hmm. but they became, if not friends, at least very close acquaintances, and all of them gave to me. Uh, an incredible uh, amount of their own uh, talent by passing it along to me, by showing me and teaching me and so forth. That opened the door for me to be heard and to be thought of as capable by so many other singers. And uh, Andy Williams took me on, and then, uh, as I mentioned, Jack Jones and I, and, and, and it, you know, it just, it, it, one just led to another. Well, Vinny, what I understand from singers mm -hmm. is that there are pianists that play like for themselves, and there are pianists who play for singers. Yes, that's and true. And I have a feeling that's what you do. Well, you can do both. There's no, there's no, there's no question that you, you, if you have the ability, you can be both a soloist and an accompanist. Mm -hmm. But accompanying is a, is a talent unto itself. And to understand how to play for a singer is, um, is, is something that I think you have to have some intrinsic. Uh, understanding of that and I learned I, I, I polished that talent if you will by being a Sinatra because mm -hmm. you had to do it right with him or you just weren't there the next right. week. he never he never turned around and said no I don't like that do it a different he, you either did it the way he wanted it or the next week there'd be somebody else sitting at the piano mm -hmm. so uh, I was made aware of, of, of paying close attention to him by Gordon Jenkins and Don Cox and those people they they, they clued me as to how to go about doing this correctly mm -hmm. uh, and, and because they apparently uh, thought I had something to offer and, and, and were willing to share with me their knowledge and their experience, which of course for which I'm eternally grateful because it did work out with Mr. S and he and I became very tight musically and that led to all my other... Right. Well, Vinny, let's talk about the book that you wrote okay. here. Frankly, just between us, I love the title. <laughs> Thank it's you. great. Thank you. How yeah. did you decide to write the book? Well, I have a co-author who's a friend of mine uh, who happens to be a published author 
he and I've known each other for the better part of 40 years. Where he's from Syracuse too, and still lives there. And among many uh, other things that he's done in his life, he has become uh, not only an author, but he also has a company through which uh, they edit or write for many music-oriented magazines and books, Music Trades, the International Musician Magazine, etc. And he suggested to me one day, he said, you should write a book. And I said, who's going to be interested in what I have to say? He said, well, why don't you write a couple of chapters? Let me take it to the publishers that I know and see what I can do, which he did. And Hal Leonard Publishing, who published this book, who publishes many music-oriented books, bought it right away. And uh, I finished it in several months with Bob's help. And uh, although I wrote the book myself, he contributed some outside viewpoints and so forth because he knew me not only as a friend, but he also knew me as a musician. And uh, the, I just wrote about my life from the time I left Syracuse until now. And there's a lot of nice pictures in here of, of all of the people with whom I've been associated. Well, the cover has Mr. Sinatra yeah. standing out in front of you, yes. and you with very dark hair. Oh, well, not only did I have dark hair, but I had a lot of it. A lot of hair. <laughs> it seems like most Italians have a lot of hair, Indeed. don't they? Well, for, uh, yeah, well, I'm hoping. Well, <laughs> well yeah, hoping exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. But you have a book signing coming up here in Palm Springs area, even though we're sitting here in Las Vegas right That's now, true. but you're going to be in Palm Springs. Well, I have a book signing here in Las Vegas also on the on the 19th of February, uh -huh. but I also have a book signing in Palm Springs at Pepper Tree on the 25th. Saturday, February 25th at 3 p.m. Yes, I will have I will have I will be in Palm Springs um, with with Stephen Eby, and uh, they have been gracious enough to offer me this book signing. And there's also one on the 26th, too, a luncheon at the Thunderbird Hotel, or Thunderbird Thunder, Country, Country Club. Uh, on thank you. Sunday, the 26th, yes. Sun, Thunderbird Country Club, Thunder, there's a there's luncheon. There's another one, yes, yes. another book signing there, too. Yes. Well, how exciting for it's you. It's very exciting. I did a book signing in New York at Barnes & Noble in Lincoln Center. Wow. And had a fantastic time there. Uh, Jonathan so, Schwartz, you know who Jonathan Schwartz is? Yes, he, of course. He came and introduced me to the uh, audience, which... But Jonathan and I have known each other for many years, but that was the most gracious thing for him to do. Uh, Pat Cooper came and did 10 minutes of uh, <laughs> raining on me, you know. Very, very funny man. Joe Piscopo was there singing a couple songs with me and so forth. They had a piano there. It, it, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's kind of uh, like in another life for me, you know, because I never expected it. And I don't know, maybe, you know. If I sell 10 books, I, I, if I sold none, I'd be happy to. Just <laughs> okay, but it. how many have you autographed already? So. I've autographed a few hundred you, of them. Have yeah. you really? Yeah. So you've sold more than 10. <laughs> oh, unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Yes. They good. are available at Barnes & Noble or on Amazon.com you know, mm -hmm. or on BlueEyes.com. Okay, and the signing is, the first signing will be in Palm Springs is Saturday, February 25th at 3 p.m. at the Pepper Tree Bookstore. It, on, I, I thought it was 2 p.m. Did you have? Uh, the information says 3 p.m. We'll call Pepper Tree Bookstore in downtown Palm right. Springs on North Palm Canyon Drive to find out when Vinny, Vincent Balcone is going to be there to just autograph the book. Yes. And Vinny, when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about the people you're working with here at the McCallum Theater oh, this yeah. season. That. that should be just terrific. Yes, indeed. We'll be right back with Talk of the Desert in Las Vegas with Vincent Balcone. The Talk of the Desert. The Desert Symphony has something for everyone this season. Live entertainment supported by your professional symphony orchestra creates great memories for the entire family. Experience the finest musicians performing the classics, popular songs from theater, and even more from motion pictures. For tickets and information, go to thedesertsymphony.org or call 760-340-ARTS or 760-773-5988. Talk of the Desert is still in Las Vegas for the second half of this show with Vincent Balcone, author, conductor, musician extraordinaire, and joining us 
is none other than Frankie Randall. Hi, Frankie. Conductor for the world. Conductor for the world. That's really no joke. No joke no, about he, this. Well, I don't know if you talked about it on the first part of the show, because I was out in the uh, commissary here, but uh, uh, Vinny really does conduct for the Everybody. Biggest, well, Tony I said he was Bennett, name Steve dropping. Amy. Uh, uh, We've been through that. We've been. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, okay. But we don't want to bore the. We don't want to bore the viewers. Okay. But thank you. Thank you covered it already. Right. But part of the reason you're joining us on the second half is both mm -hmm. of you are working. Well, Frankie, March seventh at the McCallum. Mm -hmm. But Vinny, you're going to be with Steve and Edie at the McCallum Theater starting February twenty fourth through March March second, yes. and then you're back here then on March seventh right with, with Frankie. Yeah, with Frankie. So and you, when you come to see um, Frankie or Steve and Edie at the McCallum, Vinny will be there. Vinny is soon to be the house conductor at the McCallum. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Just venue. can't get rid. Of you, huh? What a great theater! Isn't that a gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I, I, I've been there many times and I've enjoyed it every time. It's a what a great place to perform. Yeah. 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 Well, for that Italian, you had to have an Italian conductor, didn't you? Well, I got an Italian conductor conducting the Pat Rizzo Orchestra. Yeah. For yes. <laughs> you. From from me, right. Frank was Bona. Frank was Bona, yes. yes. Right. Uh, uh, Julius La Rosa. Yeah. Pete Barbuti. Yeah. And Dick Cantino. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there's just too much well, Italians on that stage. Well, you know what Sinatra used to say, if we had one more, it would be investigated. When he would introduce us, that because we had Tony Matola, Gene Chirico, uh, myself, and uh, of course Irv Kotler was not Italian, but he, he would, he would, you know, most of us were Italian. That's what, that's the line he would use. We have one more I Italian. They're going to investigate it. <laughs> I love it. Well, Steve, how long have you been working, uh, Steve? I just have made Steve and Edie. Vinny, how long have you been working for Steve and Edie? And you know, you don't, you don't have to say, say Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet because everybody, everybody knows, knows yeah. who Steve It wouldn't be is. Steve Lawrence and Edie I mean, or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Steve said that uh, Dean Martin used to call each one. Used to call Steve, Steve and Edie. He'd say, "Hey, Steve and Edie." <laughs> <laughs> we well, you know, have been out to dinner with them, and they talk about well, they had Steve's career, they had Edie's career, and they had Steve and Edie's That's career. Amazing. They so are the very, they are the best. They're unquestionably the best act in show business today. I absolutely agree. And they are unquestionably the finest show business duo that's ever been. Just no question about they're that. They're just the. They're the I mean, not only are they two of the greatest singers that have ever walked on this earth, but they're they're funny. They have a they have tremendous comedy in their show. They have some of the greatest music, like Sinatra's book, some of the greatest music ever written by the greatest arrangers in the world. I've been with them now. This will be my uh, third year, and it's been an absolute uh, treasure for me uh, to be with them. I've known them. Uh, we are we become very close personal friends, uh, uh, my wife and I, and Edie and Steve. But before that, I've known them for years, and I was offered a position with them some years ago, which I was not able to accept. And uh, the second time, I was real pleased that I was because Good. working with them has put a a real cap on my career. I'll tell you, it's been great. Well, Frankie, when you call Steve, what when you ask, how's Edie? What does he say? I don't know if I should say it on TV. Well, yeah. you know, if you can say it or not. Well, anyway, Steve would rather be, he'd rather be a comedian than it's, anything I, else. I almost think, Vinny, we might agree, I almost think that Steve gets as much or maybe even more out of telling a joke that he does for the applause at the end uh, of the song. It, it's, it, he's so good at it. He's got a great, great uh, 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 comedic feel about himself. Absolutely. He, he loves to laugh, and so does uh, she as far as that's concerned. I still see him regularly on old um, uh, uh, Carol Burnett shows, and the nanny, he played the, he played the uh, Fran Drescher's father on the nanny. I mean, he is, he's just so fun. Now he's doing uh, CSI yes. currently. He's a fine actor. He's a, he could have been a great stand-up comic if he hadn't been such a great singer. But he's one, <laughs> he's one of, the, of the four or five greatest singers of, of, of our time. Really. One of the funniest things, you know, when they show the of course you do, when they show the film in front of their show, there's a, a bit that he, I, I think it's on the Carol Burnett show, that he and Sammy Davis do together. Oh, that's With the paint. It's hysterical. It is, you're right, it's, it's hysterical. hysterical. Yeah. In fact, the, the, the film that they show in, in front is in yeah. just one funny thing right after yeah. another. And they show pictures of back when he was in the uh, in the service, yeah. uh, when, he, when they uh, first, first got married. Yeah, when they first uh, got married. Uh, Ed Murrow was interviewing them. They have a, about a 13 minute video that starts the show. That is that has the audience it's, rolling oh, on the floor before. Tears go streaming down my face. It's oh. just wonderful. 
more, right. but it only scratches the surface of their career. Yeah, I understand that, but you know, it's, you tie that to the, to the hour and 45 minutes they, did, right. they do singing, That's right. and it's a two-hour show that is uh, incomparable. It's mm -hmm. just incomparable. Mm -hmm. I love when they do the bit where they walk around the stage arm in oh, arm, yeah. and they just talk to one another. It's, yeah. it's just off the cuff. It's fantastic. Is that pre-planned? It's, you... it's scripted to a, to a point. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of it is that they they put enough uh, they put enough improvisation in it to make it sound like it's the first time they've ever done it. If you sit in the audience and watch this, you swear that, it, that this is the first time they've ever done this thing, uh, and and that's how good they are at being able to do that. So they keep it fresh by stick. You know, they have so much material from which they can. They Anybody can know how long they've been married? Uh, they got married in, and I'm, I, I'm not, I don't know that I'm accurate. Yeah. They have told me, I think, I think it was uh, in the early 50s. Yeah, well, they were on Edward R. Murrow, I remember, just after they, they got married. They just gotten married. Yeah, it was Six black and white part of the video clips exactly, of this right. video presentation. Yeah, it yeah. could have been in 52 or 50, I, I, I don't know for yeah. sure, but yeah. it's, it's been a while. Well, anyway, you can't miss Stephen Eady and Vincent Valcone conducting for them. And by the way, uh, Vinny, I want to give you a compliment. I've been to many performances, and I hope you take this as a compliment, but you really conduct or direct that orchestra you're working with. I mean, I see you giving them cues and really keeping that orchestra in line. Well, uh, thank you. I, that's something that uh, I, I learned from working with Mr. Sinatra. He, you either did that, or like I told you, you weren't there next week. You, you better make sure that the orchestra played the music with the dynamics correct, mm -hmm. and the feeling correct, and the tempo correct, and the notes correct. I mean, you just you've got to stay focused and concentrate on what you're doing. And if you can't concentrate, you know, uh, Mr. Sinatra accepted mistakes. He made them too. He would accept the mistake in the orchestra. But if the mistake came from lack of concentration, that was unforgivable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was unforgivable. You, you know, for only an hour, an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, put your, concentrate, you know, put your focus on what you're doing. That's why we call him El Duce. <laughs> 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 no, he really does. Yeah, you're absolutely right, yeah. Melinda. Yeah. When he conducts an orchestra, he wants their full attention. He wants them to focus on what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's great. In fact, well, we can't talk about exactly what what is said, but Paul Anka has got a tape out oh. where he threatens a band because the band the, he didn't like what the band did. Oh, no, wait a second. Why can't we talk about non-TV? No, no, because <laughs> of the language, language that he uses. Yeah, he says, what, what do you guys want me to do? Get Vinnie Falcon call him back in here to, to whip him and shake, yeah. you know? I heard, I heard that tape. My son, my son's friends were really giving him the business about it. They, and they, he brought, he, I didn't know it existed. And they gave him copy I guess it's it's like it's all over the world yeah. but I didn't know about it now, you know. but uh, I finally have heard it and it's very very funny it's no he does he does he gets the most out of an orchestra okay Frankie you're a performer that works with this extraordinary talent tell me what it's like working with Vincent it's great Michael. well of course from his experience as he mentioned you know once he worked for Sinatra you know that's that's a top of the line and I'm a piano player as most of your audience knows and uh, I'm most comfortable with, really when I'm at the piano except when he's at the piano. Uh, really, I really mean that. That's a compliment. I really mean because there are great pianists who are wonderful technicians and, and, and everything that, that goes along with it, but to know what to play and moreover what not to play sometimes is, uh, is uh, part of genius, actually. Yeah, exactly. Let's just quickly talk about March 7th, because you two will be working at yeah, the McCallum we're together. Looking forward to that. We'll be at the McCallum, and please, uh, what, what is it? Uh, three, four. Zero ARTS. ARTS, yes. Or the please website. Call in for tickets. We're going to have a lot of fun with Peeper Booty and, of course, Julius LaRosa. You conducted for Julius right here at the Stardust uh, last year. Yep. Uh, Pete, you know, for years, and for of course, Dick Cantino. So we're going to have a lot of fun there, and we invite your uh, audience along. And then we want to make sure that. Non Italians come as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also, you know, get tickets for Stephen Eady if they're even still available. I don't know because they normally sell out way in advance. But then you can say, hey, I know Vinnie Valcone. He's the one, you know, back there at the piano and conducting everybody. And really, ladies and gentlemen, watch Vinnie conduct. He does a beautiful job. Thank you. And let's finish up here. Let's, Frankie, you were looking at, at Vinnie's book. Yeah. And you're looking at photos inside. Oh, there's some great photos in this book of, of Vinnie when he was uh, about uh, four years old, I think, in <laughs> Still in diapers, is that the, right? Oh, there's some wonderful picture. Here, I'm looking at uh, he and Tommy Lasorda. And uh, here he is with, uh, of course,
because all the pictures include Sinatra, which the book is about. And uh, forgive me, Vinny, I haven't had a chance to uh, to read the book yet. But no, I brought it for you. Thank you very much. Here, here he is with uh, Don Costa with all the uh, yeah, President Reagan's inauguration. I love this one with Pavarotti. Pavarotti. Yeah. In fact, I uh, and we'll be doing it at the McCallum. I do a song that Vinny wrote with a fellow by the name of Joe Cacuzzo, who was a very talented, not only songwriter, but a great drummer. Um, and uh, in fact, I was talking to Keely Smith not long ago about him. Uh, he works with uh, with her when she works in New York. Anyway, the name of the song is The Singer, and Vinnie wrote a beautiful melody to this to this song. And I take some old pictures. Of that that picture of you and Pavarotti and Frank Sinatra is 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 in this piece of film that I show behind the, uh, yeah. the song as I'm so singing. Frankie sang it for me as a demo, and then and of course he does now he does it in his show, but. Uh, uh, because of the demo that he did for me, uh, I was able to, uh, Joe was able to introduce it to, to uh, Rosemary Clooney, who fell in love with the song and recorded it on her uh, last two albums, one of which I went to Capitol and, and uh, Hollywood and recorded it with her. So it was, it's, it was a, a, another feather in the cap, so to speak, if you will. Another name song. dropper. <laughs> yeah, beautiful song. <laughs> well, I know, Frankie, that when you show this video, you have people in the audience crying. Oh, it's I've seen so, so many times I look out and I see yeah. people crying yeah. after this song, Vinny. Yeah, you've seen it as well. Yeah. It's, a, it's a wonderful song. The words, the music is just, uh, it's so right on about Frank Sinatra. And especially being in Palm Springs, which is, of course, Frank Sinatra is home for so many oh, years. I you tell know? you, I drive by the complex every now and then when I'm down there and I just don't believe what I see. I don't believe the growth. Uh, yeah. Uh, when I was with him, the, the, across the street from his complex was just empty desert for as far as you could see. Now it's all built up and it's, it's incredible. Well, right, right where we're sitting, people at Booty and I were talking, we should have bought all this oh, land when oh, we first came here Vegas, in no the joke. 50s and oh. 60s. Oh my goodness. Well, we've only got a minute left, and mm -hmm. I just want to recap. The book you wrote is called Frankly Between Us. Frankly Just Between Us. Oh, Frankly Just Between Us. Thank you. And it's available at Amazon.com, um, other... At Barnes & Noble, Barnes and other bookstores. And you're going to be signing, autographing the book at the Pepper Tree Bookstore in downtown Palm Springs on Saturday, February 25th, right. and also at a luncheon on the 26th, 26th at Thunderbird right. Country Club. Right. And you'll be performing with Stephen Eady at the McCallum here at the end of February, first part of March. Yes. And with Frankie, and with Frankie Randall for That's Italian on March 7th. So, yeah. wow. <laughs> You're going to have to buy a condo in Palm Springs. Uh, you, yeah, you should be in the other, you should be in the, <laughs> not Palm Springs desert, not the Las Vegas desert, yeah. maybe, I think. So, anyway, thank you both of you for joining me on Talk of the Desert. Thank you, thank you. Vincent Valcone, conductor to the stars. Frankie Randall, a star. No. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, don't say no. Yeah. Yes, you say yes. Thank you, thank you. And thank you, audience, for joining us. For more information, email TOTDTV at questoffice.net and visit talkofthedesert.tv on the web.